Okay guys, I'm back with another video. Um, a little creeped out, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, I've been wanting to uh, do a video about Whitney Houston for a while. Um, something never sat right with me uh, since she died in that bathtub. So it's been um, weighing on me and yeah, it's been years. Um, I've talked about it, you know, with people, close people that I know that understand these kind of things. And I've never really um, put it out there as far as public-wise. So I'm going to do it tonight. Um, and it's funny because I just checked um, her birthday. And her birthday is today, August 9th. Um, and I think that was crazy because I didn't even know that. Like, I never even looked up her birth date. She was born the day before me. And um, we're both nines in numerology. And that kind of freaked me out because I'm like, damn, I was going to do that video anyway today. And it just so happens that it's her birthday. So I guess I am meant to do this video. Um, Number one, I don't believe that um, she died of natural causes. I don't believe that she was high. Um, I think she was drinking champagne like any other star does when they're getting ready to perform. And she was singing in the bathroom and she was heard, you know, getting her stuff together and uh, seemed fine. Um, and the only thing that is really suspect about that is that her previous entourage would never let Whitney take a bath. And they've said it numerous times. Um, they never trusted her to take a bath because, God forbid, she fell asleep and she would drown. So they made sure that she only took showers and they would check on her every 10 minutes or so. This particular night of the pre-Grammy party when she was upstairs... Um, she shut the door and started running a bath. Now, her previous entourage wasn't there. So I guess the newer people, her hair and her makeup artist or whoever, didn't bother to say anything um, about her taking a bath or making sure she didn't take a bath. So I found that really suspect. Um, if you, for years you know, watch this woman and told her not to take a bath. And then that particular night, you just don't care if she takes a bath or not. Um, so that's suspect in itself. Um, nobody checked on her. She was in there for about an hour or so they say, um, before they came in and found her face down in the bathtub. And what makes this all the more suspect is earlier that day she interrupted an interview with Clyde Davis, Brandy, and Monica. Um, she just came walking into the studio, interrupted the uh, interview, um, hugged Clyde Davis. They asked her why she was wet, why her hair was wet. And she said, oh, they try to drown me again. And then either Monica or Brandy says, again? And she says, yeah, again. And I remember first seeing that and I'm like, why would she say something like that? They try to drown me again. Like, how many times did this, did they try to kill this woman that she knew they were trying to drown her. It, it, it's just, it's, it, it's insane. Um, and, uh, I'm gonna leave a link to that, um, interview below because it's just something you have to say. Um, after that, uh, she tells her daughter to go hug, go hug your grandfather, uh, your, your godfather, meaning Mr. Clyde Davis. And she goes and blah, blah, blah. That's the end of that. Um, Clyde Davis is the one who 
discovered Whitney Houston and he's the first person that got her record deal and she was dealing with him pretty much the whole 30 years of her career. So this man had a lot of control over what she did, what she didn't do. Um, and he actually was helping her with her comeback, um, which is why she was going to perform on the Grammys the next day. Um, this was like her big comeback and um, her and Clyde had got back together after she separated from him for a while. Um, so this was like a really big thing and she was really excited about it and um you know she kept saying how she was so much closer to god now and she lost her way but she went back to her roots and she realized that you know god was the only thing in her life that was ever permanent and she wanted to go back to her roots so the last album she made is um, very, very gospel and very praise, praising God. Um, her single, I, I turn to you, um, basically saying that she turns to God and she gave her life back to God. Um, and what makes this even better is that Bobby Christina took a bath in that same hotel room that night, I mean, that the night before, and she almost drowned. They found her right in time and were able to resuscitate her. Now, this was the night before, okay, Whitney Houston drowned. Now, what are the odds of a daughter and a mother drowning in the same bathtub? Um, were was was whatever put in her drink meant for Whitney and the daughter drank it and went and took a bath and almost died because that was for Whitney or were they trying to kill the daughter first? I don't know. But if you ask me, the odds of two people, okay, face down in the same bathtub in the same hotel, okay, days apart is a little freaked a little freaky as far as I'm concerned, okay? And I don't believe in coincidence. Everything happens for a reason. And that right there set me off. So getting back to them finding Whitney face down in the bathtub. Number one, when they found her, the water was ice cold. Now, who's going to take an ice cold bath? That's one. You're not going to. So... It seems to me like what happened was, is she was going to take a shower. Because, you know, we all, it doesn't matter if you put the hot water on first or the fucking cold water on first or whatever. But let's just say, you know, for shits and giggles, she put the cold water on first. Um, now, we don't know exactly what caused her to collapse. We don't know what kind of, you know, drugs they put in her drink or any kind of you know stuff they could have given her um in the bottle of champagne she was drinking it could have been anything it could have been in her food who knows um but it just seems to me like she was getting you know ready to take a shower and she went to put the cold water on and passed out and she fell face forward, okay? Now, usually if you fall in the bathtub, right? Like, you can't see somebody falling face forward in the shower. It's more likely of you falling backward and landing, you know, on your back. Um, so they find her face down in the, in the water. The water's ice cold. They try to resuscitate her for whatever amount of time. According to somebody, it was an hour. To some people, it was 35 minutes. It's That's, that's uh, not... There's no fact as far as how long they try to resuscitate her. Um, by this time, they called the paramedics. They called her daughter, who was at a mall um, at the time. 
And she rushed back and she had it be taken to the hospital because she basically had a nervous breakdown when she saw her mother. Um, and then I guess she also had a nervous breakdown because she almost drowned the night before. So, you know, like I said, all of this since 2012 has been, you know, in and out of my head, you know, along with other cases, but this one just in particular bothered me a lot. Um, and another thing that's suspect is the fact that they left her body laying there for 11 hours, okay, as per Clyde Davis's request, because they were having their pre-Grammy party downstairs while Whitney Houston's body was laying dead upstairs. According to him, he didn't want a commotion and he wanted to give Whitney her privacy when they took her out. So he wanted to wait until after the pre-Grammy party um, to bring her out, which to me is a joke. Um, to me, the pre-Grammy party was a ritual and they were doing this while her body was still upstairs. Um a lot of stars have talked to people who were at that party. They said they weren't comfortable with being at the party, knowing that Whitney Houston was dead upstairs. Um, some people didn't say anything and just went along with, you know, the party. Um, a lot of, a lot of stars left. A lot of people went home, uh, after finding out that Whitney was dead. Um, a lot of people didn't go. But the people who did go, you know, I mean, hey, the show must go on. You know, that's the way show business is. So to them, I guess they were just like, listen, you know, Clive, Clive needs us here for whatever satanic ritual we're doing this time. And, you know, we need her dead body upstairs. So her dead body was left upstairs for precisely 11 hours. Why? he wanted to leave her there 11 hours because he specifically said, I want her body kept in the room for 11 hours. Okay. He didn't say, I want her body kept in the room for, you know, until the party's over or no, he wanted the body there for 11 hours. Fine. 11 hours go by. She's finally taken out, um, of the hotel in the coroner's van brought to the hospital, you know, for her autopsy and toxicology reports and all this and that. And the funny thing is too, another, another little thing that I thought was really funny was that they said that they found Valium and Champagne and cocaine in the bathroom with her, right? Number one, who takes Valium anymore, okay? I haven't heard people taking Valiums since like the early 80s. That's one, okay? Two, you're not gonna fucking take Valium to calm yourself down and then sniff Coke to make yourself more hyper. That, that makes no sense whatsoever. So right there, that was a take giveaway that that was fucking bullshit, okay? The fact of the matter is, everything could have been planted, okay, before anybody else got there. Um, there was also another funny incident, which I don't think is funny, but it was funny to the people that were there. One of the sheriffs or one of the police officers lifted up the sheet and saw her dead body and made a comment like, Oh, well, for her age, she still looks pretty damn good. Well, he no longer has a job there. I'll just say that. So these were the people that were around her, okay, when she was dead. These are the type of people that we had around her. So that just goes to show you something. So basically, the autopsy came back really fast. 
faster than most, which I think is kind of interesting because, you know, it, it depends. Some, some autopsies take longer than others. Um, but when they want an autopsy, it could be done in a day. And then they try to say in other, in other instances that, oh, it's going to take, uh, you know, a couple of weeks. But according to, you know, this right here, they did it pretty, pretty quick. And it says a small spoon with a white crystal like substance in it and a rolled up piece of white paper were found in the bathroom where Houston died. According to the coroner's report, such items are used to snort cocaine. Um, why would you need a spoon to snort cocaine? That makes no sense. That would be more like heroin. Okay. Some people use a spoon for cocaine administration. The law enforcement said these days it's likely around for meth, which was not found in the scene, according to the in investigator. So likely used as an inhalation tool. Okay. So they're saying that she used the spoon to inhale the cocaine. Um, previous reports said traces of cocaine and prescription medication were in her system. Okay. Some, everybody's on some kind of prescription medicine these days. Both the initial and final reports state that the blood tests indicate that she smoked marijuana within two weeks of her death. Whoopie do. Marijuana is legal in California if used for me medicine purposes. Whatever. Forensic toxicologist Bruce Goldberg said that details are of her blood from the toxicology report indicate that she was acutely intoxicated from cocaine. And that the time of her death, at the time of her death, and was repeated was a repeated cocaine user. Okay, number one, we knew, we know, we know that already. Okay, and it says acute amount, meaning a very small amount of cocaine. Number one, when you sniff cocaine and you go you go all out with that shit, you ain't gonna just sniff an acute amount of cocaine. Okay, you're going to sniff an eight ball or something before it's time for you to do whatever it is that you're going to do, because that's how it works. So an acute amount, the fuck, what is that? One snort of cocaine? That's not going to kill her. So that meant that means absolutely nothing to me. Then it says a plethora of prescription medications, medication bottles. A plethora of, I'm sorry, a plethora of medication, prescription medication bottles were found in the room according to the final reports. The final reports listed a total of 12 different medications, including anti-anxiety medication, Xanax, a muscle relaxer, Fexerol, prescribed from five different doctors. Now, number one, let me just say this. Everybody's on anti-anxiety medication these days. So what the fuck does that mean? Now, where is the volume in this report? Okay. Instead of volume, they have her on Xanax and a muscle relaxer, Flexerol. Now, Xanax is a muscle relaxer. Okay. So if she's taking Xanax and she's taking Flexerol at the same time, that would be more than enough right there, you know, to calm her ass down. Now, I heard that these medications that were prescribed to her were also this from the same doctors that prescribe medications to Michael Jackson. Now, how's that for a fucking story? Okay? So now we have her sniffing coke on 12 different medications, including anti-anxiety, Xanax, and muscle relax, and flex are all prescribed from five different doctors. Goldberg described the level of prescription drugs in her system as mild and said Xanax did not contribute to her death. Okay. Now, this is where it confuses me. Because you take a whole bottle of Xanax, most likely you're going to die. Um, so, the prescription drugs in her system were mild, which means... She probably didn't take them all that day, all at the same time. They were just in her system 
from previous days before, okay? Prescription drugs stay in your system for a while. There was an open bottle of champagne, also sat on the mini bar, and an open can of beer was on the table. There was also a bottle of beer on the nightstand and several loose tablets. Tablets of what? Houston family has expressed surprise that she was using drugs again. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey, sister-in-law Pat Houston attributed Whitney's downfall to the lifestyle change, where she saw Whitney chasing a dream, looking for comfort and love, and it and it was younger, she said. The Whitney was chasing someone that would ultimately hurt her. While admitting she was concerned about the singer's behavior at party, at the party two nights before her death, Pat Houston told uh, Winfrey that she didn't think the star was abusing drugs in her final days. But after the initial toxicology report was released, Houston wrote a statement to the Associated Press, we are saddened to learn of the toxicology results, although we are glad to now have closure. How the fuck do you have closure? Okay. What were the pills on the fucking, on the night table? Why is she going to drink champagne and beer at the same time? Makes no sense. Beer is a man's drink, so which makes me think that there was somebody else in that fucking hotel room with her. Okay? The hour that they left her alone. Who the fuck was that? Okay? Who the fuck was drinking the beer? Did they even fucking take DNA samples off the beer cans? Probably not. Why? Because they probably already knew who fucking did it because he's the puppet that made them, they made him do it. So why bother doing, looking into any of this shit? Then it says, the missing items. The coroner reported that when found in her room at the Beverly Hilton, Whitney's purse contained her wallet, but descendant's California driver's license had been removed from her wallet, which was inside the purse. Prior to arrival, okay, also prior to my arrival, the majority of the descendants' prescription medication bottles had been removed from a brown bag that was on top of the table in the southeast corner of the living room and then placed on top of that same table. What the fuck does that mean? It was determined that no foul play was involved in the singer's death. Of course it wasn't. Yeah, no. We all sit there, sniff pills, drink champagne, okay, snort cocaine, take Xanax, all by yourself. You do not drink champagne and beer together, okay? Give me a fuck a break. It says, it's unclear how many plastic surgeries Houston underwent throughout her life, but it is now clear that she did at some point undergo breast augmentation surgery. The coroner report describes small scars on her breast associated with breast implants. The outlines of bilateral bre breast prosthesis are visible. Who gives a shit about that? Okay. Defibrillator. According to the coroner's report, there was a defibrillator patch on the upper right side of her chest. And there was another defibrillator patch on the upper right side of her torso. Now, these are the two things, the two patches that they put on you when they're trying to restart your heart, if anybody doesn't know. This does not likely indicate therapeutic treatment for Houston's heart, but shows that part of the life-saving efforts administered by the paramedics was likely the use of a defibrillator to establish norm normal sinus rhythm, I mean, rhythm to Houston's heart. Okay, it says not likely indicated therapeutic treatment. So did they do it or did they not do it? Or do they just stick those things there and they believe they did it? The wig. Another piece of new information from Wednesday's report is that Houston wore a brown wig, which was tightly affixed to her head at the time of her death. Okay, well, she didn't walk around without her hair done. This is Whitney Houston we're talking about. Dentures. Houston also wore dentures. The coroner's report indicated this relatively common among long-term drug abusers, habitual use of drugs such as crack cocaine, which contains acidic chemicals, which will leave the wearing, which will lead to wearing down of the tooth's tissue over time. Tooth decay can also be the result of vomiting 
and tooth grinding, which is also common among drug and alcohol abusers. Okay. So her teeth were fucked up from doing drugs. Okay. We all know she was doing drugs for years. She went on binges for months at a time. The coroner said that the, my, the mild emphysema was detected in Houston. Houston's voice was the gift she left for her fans, but sadly for her, she was losing her beautiful voice at the time of her death. From the final report, it seems clear that not only did she struggle with lethal drugs and alcohol, but she was unable to stop smoking. Okay? Now, Houston's body was discovered by her assistant on February 11th, face down in a water-filled tub with a bloody purge coming from her nose. Of course, they had to add that in because that makes it more believable that she was sniffing cocaine. There were two superficial abrasions to the left side of her forehead. Superficial? I don't think any, any abrasion on a dead person is superficial, okay? Everything has to be investigated. Abrasion on the left side of her forehead, and there was a superficial abrasion on the left side of the bridge of her nose. So now... If she hit her nose, that would be why there's some kind of bloody mucus coming out of it. Let's, it, you know, right away they want to say it's because she was sniffing drugs. Forensic, forensic pathologist said he does not fully concur with the final anatomical diagnosis on Houston, noting that the water in her tub at the Beverly Hilton was extremely cold. And he believes this indicates that Houston was not sitting in the tub and somehow accidentally drowned. Okay. Now, isn't that what I just said? I can't with these people. I think she fell into the tub, accounts for the little bruise that's seen on the left side of her forehead, other pressure marks on the face include a slight laceration of the lip and the fact that she was lying face down. I think that this lady fell into the water. She was unconscious, dead or dying when she fell into the tub. I do not believe the death was due to drowning. He added, although I cannot rule out that she could have been in an, an agonal moment and with her head submerged in water, that clearly could have contributed to her death. Well, that's great. That's wonderful. That really clears it up for me. Like I said, people, why is it that famous people either drowned in the bathtub, overdose on drugs, get into car accidents? It's always the same MO. Oh, plane, plane crashes too. Let's not forget that. This has been going on in Hollywood since the beginning, okay? If you look up how many actors and singers have died, either in a plane crash, an automobile accident, an overdose, a drowning, <coughs> you're going to be there for some time because it's an MO. They're known for this shit, okay? Now, looking deeper at the events surrounding her death, okay? I'm sure you'll see, as I see, that the death of Whitney was a sacrificial ritual, okay? Which I firmly and 100% believe. Nobody has to agree with me, but that's how I feel. Now, like I told you about the Clive Davis interview, which I'm going to post below, um... So you could see that and see what she says. Um, and like I told you, Clive was her mentor and handler and was very controlling. So at one point in her career, Whitney had a public feud with the mentor and parted ways professionally. So that could be another reason why Clive had some beef, okay? Whether he said he was okay or not, that could have been a grudge he was holding against her, okay? Because when you're controlling and you lose control over somebody, you know, these people, they can't handle that, okay? So they got to regain control at some point. 
So this was his way of gaining, regaining control by talking her into a comeback. Okay. Now, in my opinion, two things are off right there. When she says in the interview, the drowning comment, very odd since she drowned. Or now they're saying that that wasn't the cause of that, that she was unconscious before she hit the water. Whitney also gave a note to Brandy, okay, who seems very surprised since Whitney walked in the middle of an interview to give her this note. Was, Win was, was she hinting Brandy because she knew what was happening? <sighs> Let me tell you something, okay? Brittany is a uh, Brittany. Brandy is suspect to me. Number one, Whitney Houston hands you a note and drops dead that night. And you refuse to read that note saying that you're going to keep that between you and Brittany. Why? I mean, you and Whitney. Why? Why? What was in the letter? Okay. We all want to know. Did she know that she was about to be sacrificed? I mean, she knew they were trying to drown her. She says that clear as fucking day. So did she feel that Brandy had a, a had a hand in this? And that's why she gave her the note? I don't know. She was surprised by the note. And when asked by an interview what the note was about, she said she will keep that information to herself. Of course she will. Because she can't say shit. Because she'll be the next one face down in a fucking bathtub. Okay. When Whitney Houston died on the same day as Brandy's birthday. Coincidence? I think not. On the 11th of February, on which Brandy was turning 33. 11 number of death. 33 Freemason numerology. Okay? Now, the Beverly Hilton Hotel, Free... Freemason-like layout, okay? You'll see in the pictures, okay? And um, you'll see what I mean with the pictures. Uh, Century Plaza Towers, all seeing eye pyramid near the Beverly Hilton Hotel. Okay, so we got the all seeing eye, okay? The hidden ones. Which shows the hidden hand involved in her death. The numerology, let's break this down for you guys. Whitney Houston was born in the, the day, on the ninth day and died on the 11th day. Stayed in the hotel room dead, okay, for 11 hours. Her funeral occurred on the 18th day, which equals nine. Her body stayed at the hotel 11 hours, like I said, at Clyde Davis's request. So nine and 11, four, three, four equals 11 and 18 equals nine, which equals what? 11 again. Now, so she was there, like I said, for 11 hours after she was declared dead, which I find, like I said, come on. Red flags here, people. Wake the fuck up. Um, Nancy Grace. Now, we know Nancy Grace has no hair on her tongue, okay? I happen to like the woman, and I don't like a lot of people. And she has even brought up the fact that she thinks Whitney was murdered, Okay. And from her saying that just makes me all the more of saying this wasn't natural court. This is, she didn't, she didn't fucking overdose. She didn't kill herself. Nothing like that. She, she was worth more dead than alive. Okay. At this point, her voice was gone. Okay. That was her money maker. So what was Clyde Davis going to get out of this woman? Yes. Her last album did pretty well, significantly well. You don't hear about it, but it did. But her comeback, what kind, what total comeback was she going to have 
if she was still smoking cigarettes, supposedly still doing drugs. Her voice was was definitely not the voice um, that she used to have. Um, so Clyde Davis basically, I guess, made the decision that she was worth more dead than alive because when you die, all your shit skyrockets, okay? As soon as Whitney Houston died, iTunes, all these different music platforms had like a 10% markup on her music. Now, if that doesn't tell you something, I don't know what does. So basically, she was worth more dead than alive. And this was Clyde Davis's final decision, okay? Fuck the comeback, okay? He needed to get her to that hotel. He needed to get her to that hotel on that specific night. Okay, because the numbers lined up and that was his final decision. Now, that day, the day of, of Whitney Houston's funeral, okay, the Pope elected 22 new cardinals. Now you're wondering what, who cares about that? 22 cardinals join club to elect Pope's successor. Now, we all see, I know a lot of people are Christian, a lot of people are Catholic, so I really don't want to, um, so what I'm looking for, I don't want to disrespect you, I don't want to disrespect your religion, I respect everybody's beliefs, just like I hope everybody respects mine, but, you know, cardinals wear red, and it just so happens that they decided to elect 22, okay, cardinals the day of her funeral. Then the 54th annual Grammys was on Sunday, which was the next day, February 12th. Nicki Minaj had a fake pope with her on the red carpet, and both, car both the cardinals, the pope, and Nicki Minaj had red robes symbolizing the whore of Babylon. Now, Number one, everybody must have been like, what the fuck is she wearing that day? Because I remember saying it myself. Why is she wearing that shit? And why does she have the Pope with her? Okay? The shit just didn't sit right with me. It was the weirdest fucking thing. And anybody who says otherwise needs fucking mental help. Okay? You don't show up to a Grammy Awards wearing some shit like that unless you're fucking performing in some type of ritual or you did perform in some type of ritual, okay? Coincidence? I don't think so because remember, I don't believe in coincidences, okay? Then there was the, the Madonna Super Bowl show. I'm sure everybody remembers that because it was actually very memorable. She did a whole fucking ritual right there on the football field. Dressing as the Babylonian goddess, okay, of darkness, making it blatant, making a blatant occult ritual live on TV, accompanied by Maya and Nicki Minaj. Okay, and remember, Nicki Minaj is the one who came dressed as a cardinal. Okay? Dancers dressed like pagan entities, priests and priestesses, Madonna who was also an actual priest of the Jewish Kabbalah, nicknamed Esther, seems to be representing the Venus Ayana Ishtar goddess. Okay, and if we you don't know who Ishtar is, please look that up. Okay, now, the stage they were performing on during the Super Bowl was shaped as a diamond, okay, a.k.a. a pyramid. Okay? What are the odds of Madonna performing a ritual on February 5th and the stage was shaped like a diamond the day before the Queen Diamond Jubilee, February 6th in Britain? Now, 5 plus 6 equals 11. There goes the number 11 again, people. Okay? Now, in the bodyguard, Whitney Houston wears an ensemble where she looks like Ishtar, Ayana, Venus during a performance, okay? So I'm going to include some pictures of that. 
One of the Super Bowl commercials is also very revealing in detail concerning Whitney Houston's death. Now, I don't know if you guys remember this, but I sure as hell do, okay? And I found it really fucking weird, okay? Sir Elton John was king in this video. The floor was black and white checkered, which is a Masonic floor. Everybody knows that, okay? Then there's a girl who looks like Whitney Houston, with a monarch butterfly symbol on the top of her head, okay? Now, if you look back at this Super Bowl video, which I'm going to try to find, and then I'll link it in below so you guys can watch it and see what I'm talking about, because, um, you know, still pictures are still pictures of you, you know, I, I want you guys to see it. Um, the Whore of Babylon and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Okay, the per the person that they were making believe was Whitney Houston in this in this commercial. The whore is associated with the Antichrist and the Beast of Revelation. Okay, Whitney Houston's daughter almost drowned in the same tub twenty four hours earlier, but the assistant got her out before it was too late. Another coincidence. Like I said, I brought this up in the beginning. What the fuck? Can I mean, you got to be pretty slow not to get what I'm saying to you right now. Okay? Gotta be pretty slow. How does your daughter almost drown in the same fucking bathtub that you're found dead in 24 hours later? Somebody explain this to me. Okay? Ridiculous. Then, Jennifer Hudson has, has the Whitney Houston Grammy tribute the next day at the 54th Grammys. She sings, I Will Always Love You. Here in this picture, which I'll attach, see Jennifer Hudson, a monarch, assessed playing tribute to Whitney Houston's death by starting the song and entering the stage in a pyramid made of light with a picture of Whitney on top of the pyramid. Now, people, do I got to spell this out for you? Okay. Do I got to do I got to fucking spell this out for you? The, there was also pyramid masonic steps as she was walking down, okay, to perform on the Grammys. Um again, the light representing Satan above her, okay? They're telling you by the symbolism present that the tribute to Whitney is saying Whitney was killed by the Illuminati or the Hidden Ones or the Hidden Hand or they or the Dark Ones, whichever one you want to call, and her death was a sacrifice. Okay? At the end of the song, when the cameras make a close-up of the audience, you can see a series of lights up in the balcony. And if you count them, you can count 11 lights. The number of death in Kabbalah. Okay, there goes the number 11 again, people. And I will show you a picture of that. <sighs> At the funeral home, two ancient Egyptian sarcophagus is probably about seven feet high were on each side of the back doors where they brought Whitney's body in and out. Now, I've been studying Egyptology my whole entire life, probably since I was able to talk. Um, there's pretty much, there's pretty much nothing somebody could tell me that I don't already know about ancient Egypt. Okay. It is my life and it is my passion. When I seen those two sargophaguses out there, okay, before any of the other information was printed, I knew right then and there that she did not die of natural causes. Okay. Those sarcoph those sarcophaguses were there to protect Whitney. Okay, as a symbol, like a, a symbolic way of saying, you know, um, these two are here to protect her soul, her essence, whatever you want to call it. Right there, you knew something's off because you've never seen that. You'll see that at my funeral, but you won't see that at anybody else's funeral, okay? 
and everybody was all the stars and Clyde Davis, that wonderful, wonderful man came through the back doors. Anybody who was somebody came through the back doors. Okay. Now through the front doors, through the back doors. I'm going to include the sarcophaguses. These sarcophaguses, like I said, are about seven feet tall. They do open. I do have one, okay, in my house. I've purchased one. They're very expensive. They're very heavy, and they're huge, okay? We got two of these on each side where you enter into the funeral home. And then I show you a, a, a bigger picture of it. Um, Whitney Elizabeth Houston's funeral service. February 18, 2012, in her hometown of Newark, New Jersey. Okay? Now, during her funeral, there's a symbol of a cross and a crown on the podium where the priest or people were giving their um, uh, eulogy or talking about Whitney. Um, and this symbol, okay, called the cross crown, is a traditional Christian symbol. A cross passing through a crown, appearing in many churches, especially Roman Catholic. The symbol is associated with Freemasonry, specifically the Knights Templar branch of the Freemasonry. It is the modern Knights Templar group symbol. Now you can look this up on Wikipedia, cross and crown. And you'll have more information if you want to go deeper into that symbol. Now, what I find even more interesting is that two years later, Bobby Christina, Whitney Houston's daughter, is found face down in her bathtub. The water's ice fucking cold. Okay. And she had been in there for quite some time. So supposedly the cable guy came that day. Somebody, one of her boyfriend's friends were there. That crazy motherfucker that she was going out with. That was supposedly her stepbrother or whatever, who they started dating was there with his girlfriend Bobby Christina was in the shower. So when the cable guy came, they went looking for her. Found her face down in the tub, just like her mother. They tried to resuscitate her. They got her heart start, started to beat again. But by the time she got to a, into the hospital, she slipped into a coma. Um, because of lack of oxygen to her brain for such a long time. You can only have, you know, your brain can only lack oxygen for a certain amount of time before it's permanent brain damage. So basically, she was in a vegetated state for quite some time, okay? Um, opened her eyes a few times. The family was being optimistic, being positive, hoping that she would recover. She never did recover, okay? And they had to pull the plug. Um, because a respirator was the only thing keeping Bobby Christina alive. Um, so what this all boils down to is how does a mother and a daughter, okay, die exactly the same way? Two years apart. Does anybody know? Can anybody answer that question? No. Because you know what? It's almost nearly impossible for that to happen. Okay? Her autopsy revealed she was covered in bruises and scars. Okay? And that was even said by her father, Bobby Brown. Bobby Christina's body showed signs of acute injury at the time of her autopsy. Okay. The document notes depressions 
in her skull and bruises referred to for the bluish discoloration of her skin on her arms and thighs. In addition to a, a dozen and well-heeled scars, on the head and neck and torso and extremities. At 95 pounds, Brown was considered undernourished according to the report. The manner of death was classified as undetermined because the circumstances under which Brown entered the bathtub are unknown. Whether her death was due to an intentional accidental causes are unknown, the medical examiner said. As people reported early Friday, marijuana, alcohol, and cocaine-related substance, sedative and anti-anxiety medications, and morphine were found in her system. According to the toxicology report, however, the medical examiner in Atlanta said the test could not indicate whether the morphine was a result of heroin, heroin use. Now, that's fucking great. Now, of course, they were going to say all that shit. Now, Bobby Brown, Bobby Christina's daughter, Whitney Houston's ex-husband, has had to be strong and mourn his loved ones in a fashion uh, that is f foreign to most people, so public, so raw, with apparently no end in sight, okay? His daughter's boyfriend, Nick Gordon, was present at Whitney Houston's hotel, at the time of her death, and he was also present with Bobby Christina at the time of her death. Now, was he the Illuminati puppy that they used to drug and kill these women? Probably. He was close, and he was trusted. Okay? He was raised as Houston's son, but never officially adopted. In the midst of a legal battle of Brown's family, a filing in the wrongful death suit alleges Brown died due to violent altercation with Gordon and that he injected her with a toxic mixture, claims that Gordon's lawyers have denied. Of course, they're going to deny it. Um, Gordon's legal counsel said he continued to grieve privately, and is astonished at the accusations. Okay. So now, is it possible that Nick Gordon was hired by the Unseen Hands? Okay. These people who wanted Whitney Houston died. And the same people kill Bobby Christina two years later. Yes, this is absolutely possible. Happens all the time. But you have to open your mind. You have to open your spirit. You have to understand that there are things in this world that are unseen. Okay? There are beings in this world that you do not see. Okay, and those beings are the hand that allows these horrible things to happen. Okay, so on that note, I do not believe that Whitney Houston was high or on drugs and intentionally put herself in a bath and drowned. Okay, and I do not believe that Bobby Christina took a mixture of drugs and died in her bathtub. Okay? I do not believe it. I will refuse to believe it. It's too uncanny. It's too weird. It's too out of this world. And that's why I will refuse because it makes no sense. Coincidences don't exist. Shit happens for a reason. You don't die the same exact way as your mother two years later. That, that, that shit doesn't happen, okay? And like I said, I am not disrespecting anyone's religion or disrespecting anyone's uh, spiritual beliefs or, you know, we could agree to disagree, okay? But just know there are forces on this planet 
causing negative and horribly disturbing things to occur every second of every day. And the sooner that you realize this, okay, the sooner that you will be able to see the truth, okay, that the veil will be lifted from your eyes and you will be able to see situations and people for what they really are. And on that note, I would like to wish Whitney Houston a very happy, happy birthday and I hope that her soul is at peace and that I miss her very much as an artist and I really wish she was still here making music. Um, I grew up listening to her music and you know she was part of my life as f you know as far as that goes um, and her death was very upsetting and I still mourn her death. And I hope that everybody appreciates this video. And um, bless you all for listening. Please be safe out there. Please stay woke. Please, you know, just try to understand and see some of the things that maybe you don't want to accept and don't want to see. Um, like I said, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to a uh, ask me. Um, I'm going to include some pictures and I'm going to try to find the links of the uh, interview. Um, and I will post that below this video. Thank you guys for listening and thank you to all my subscribers for subscribing and believing in me.